morning. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you. If it had not been for many of you, we wouldn't be where we are today. And there's a song that said, we come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. He's never failed me yet. I'm so glad that by grace we're here this morning. Through the good and the bad and the ups and the downs, we're here today to give God the praise because he's worthy of it. He's been mighty good to us. Has he failed anybody yet? Y'all mighty quiet. If it had not been the Lord, been for the Lord, we wouldn't be where we are today. It's no accident that we're where we are. Brought, brought us through many dangers, toils, and snares. But look at us today. You ought to thank him this morning from where he brought you from. Thank you for bringing you through good health. When you thought you were so sick, you weren't going to make it. You ought to thank him for your families. It's a good thing to praise the Lord. And we thank you for streaming in for wherever you are on this Mother's Day. We're going to give him praise because we know where all our health and strength come from. It comes from the Lord. God bless you. God keep you. Maybe your last time. Give him all the praise that you have. Because God is good. God bless you and God keep you. Good morning, Mount Oliver. Let's stand and sing 433. I'm on the battlefield. I am on the battlefield. Say that one more time. Oh, I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I promise him that I will serve him till I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord.
will be reading Proverbs 31 through 20, 25 through 29. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, but her husband also and her and praises her. Many daughters have done victoriously, but thou excel, excellest them all. God's word for God's people. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you how you have given us life again, God. We thank you how you have woke us up this morning and started us on our way. God, we thank you how you kept us all week long and that you will continue to keep us. Now, God, as we go into another week, God, we ask that you would bless the work of our hands, God, that you would continue to give us the strength and ability to do what only you have called us to do. God, we thank you that we, as we go about the, ha the dangerous highways and byways, that God, you would cover us under your blood, that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper, and we give you glory and honor now. It's in your precious son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Him number three forty two. <clears throat> Say, I was weak and weary, I had gone astray. Walk. 
audience. That streaming can't hear, but they need to be here. <laughs> I see some coming in the door back there. Now y'all all, all going to get on one side today, huh? That's okay. Get on one side. I don't care. Yeah, there you go. I knew somebody would come close to me. Got two of you. Three. All right. Uh-oh. 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 I'm sorry. You want to hear how you sound? Listen how you sound. Go ahead. Listen how you sound. Now you don't want to be heard. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Today is a special day. What is this special day? Say it loud. Guess what? Everybody got one, right? Huh? Yes, that is good. Who dressed you this morning? Sales, right? Yeah. I know y'all too big for moments when putting y'all clothes on. So, who fixed you something to eat if you ate? Mom is a cook. She's a. Mom and dad bought her a kitchen. So your mom going to teach you how to cook, right? Who else going to learn to cook? Anybody else going to learn to cook? Only one cook out of the whole group. <laughs> Who my mom. All right. Did you eat breakfast? Yes. Who fixed your food? My mom. All right. What are you going to learn to do when you get to be a mom? You don't know. What you going to do about your baby? Take care of her. Take care of her baby. You know what? That's something that just comes naturally to a mom. Who has shedded some teeth that's up here? You ever shed any teeth? Ever? No. Uh, who pulled it? Oh, no, don't lie. Who pulled your teeth? You? Who pulled yours? Who pulled yours? My papa. Papa is a dentist. Ooh. <laughs> How about you? Shed any teeth yet? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Normally, mom is the first dentist. Who ever had a stomach ache? Me. Who, who helped you with your stomach ache? My mom. Your mom is a doctor. <laughs> Woo! How about that? Who fixed your hair? Who fixed your hair? I know what. No, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Keisha, you ought to be saying to yourself, letting this girl fix her own hair. <laughs> who, who fixed your hair now? Come on. No one. No one? Hey, 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 hey. She is serious about this. She fixed her own hair. Who fixed your hair? My mom. Your mom. Who fixed your hair? My mom. Who fixed your hair? My mom. You let y'all, you let these little girls talk louder than y'all. What's wrong? Huh? <laughs> who fixed your hair? My mom. All right. Who fixed your hair? My mom. Oh, oh. How about you guys? 
Fix your old hair. All right. Hey, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I used to fix my afros, too. <laughs> okay. Can you think of anything else important that your mom does for you? Mind now. Bible clothes. Bible clothes. Buy clothes. Go shopping. Buy me shoes. Shoes. Just a shoe girl here. <laughs> you can just do a variety of stuff. I know because you get a birthday every Sunday. She, so, huh? She takes care of me and she helps me. I know she helps us. She takes care of us. Who takes you? My mom, everybody. Everybody. Oh, I tell you what, you all are blessed to have mom. You know that? What I want y'all to do, can y'all pray? Anybody can pray? You No? You said just at first, and then you said, can you pray? Come on, pray. No, no, I can't just that. <laughs> She's praying for another kitchen set. Your kitchen set is not big enough. James, buy this girl another kitchen set. <laughs> we pray for God. She prays to God. Now, is there anything that you can't tell God? We can tell God anything and everything, okay? So never be ashamed to tell God because he already knows what's in your heart. He already knows what you need, whether he's going to give it to you or not, okay? So I'm going to pray. But before you go back to the choir stand, I want you to go give Mommy a great big hug and kiss, okay? Wait, not yet. Hey, hey, not yet, not yet. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> she ready to do that now. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for these, your children here, Lord. We thank you for giving them to their mother. Lord, we know that they gave birth, but you gave life. And Lord, we pray that since they have been gifted to their parents, that their parents will bring them up in the admonition and the word of God. Lord, we pray that you keep them safe as they go to and from school, Lord. We realize there's danger all around. We ask you to keep them should it be your will, Lord. We pray, Father, that they will grow up to be responsible men and women, mothers and fathers, that they'll uh, be leaders in their community, in the state, and in the United States. And, Father, that you'll be glorified through their lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, everybody go give Mommy a big hug and a kiss and then back to the choir stand. I know you ain't going to give me no hug. Can I get a hug? Okay. He almost couldn't do it. <laughs> Lord, thank you. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. There are, as every year, uh, flowers in the back for mothers to get after service from the Missionary Society. I have a few announcements. I have a graduation announcement for Nicholas Mills from South Lamar High School on May 16th. I don't see a time on the on the invitation. Mm -hmm. 
The district Congress banquet will be June 24th, 2024 at Mount Galilee in Northport at 6.30 p.m. The Mount Olive Youth Choir will provide the music for the occasion. Tickets are $30 per person or a table of six for $150. June 8th is the deadline for purchasing tickets. Classes will begin June 25th and June 26th at 9 a.m. First Baptist Church, Gordo. From the Mount Nebo Baptist Church in Elrod, Alabama, Reverend Frederick Seeley, pastor, dear pastor and congregation, it is with immense joy and deep gratitude that we extend to you a heartfelt invitation to join us in celebrating and honoring our beloved pastor and first lady, the Reverend and Mrs. Frederick Seeley and family, 31st Appreciation Service. Their steadfast leadership has been a beacon of hope and guidance to us. The date will be May 19th, 2024, time 2 o'clock p.m. Reverend H.P. Thomas, Jr., pastor of the Second Baptist Church of Holt, Alabama, will be the speaker for this great occasion. Your presence will make this celebration even more meaningful <clears throat> as we come together as a community to express our deep appreciation and admiration for their commitment to shepherding God's flock. Uh, for prayer, sick shut-in, and bereavement, on the prayer list, we have Pastor Benny Henry, the King family for Traveling Graces, the Dickerson family, the Bell family also for Traveling Graces, Sister Luella McGown, Sister Lucille Henry, Sister Honora Porter, Brother Michael Williams and family for Traveling Graces, Brother Frank Henry Sr., Brother Wise Afford, Neshoba General Nursing Home, Sister Shirley Hodges, Sister Ruth Tellis, Brother Curly B. Swoop, Brother Johnny Hunter, Brother Tracy Pippins, the Lemon family, the Moses family, Sister Josephine Wash, Brother Bob Guyton, Sister Tasha Buckner, the Staple Hill Bird Davis family, Walmart store number 495, Brother Michael Hodges, Sister Vivian Hodges, Brother Albert Ezell family, Brother Lonnie Morgan, class of 2024 graduates. For sick and shut in, Sister Linda Tellis, Sister Janet Robinson, Sister Shayla Henry, Brother Leroy Brunson, Sister Alicia Gardner, Brother Bill Latham, Brother Willie Childrens, Brother Tommy Gardner, Sister Annie Marie Brown, Sister Bobby Young, Sister Lois Payne, Sister Annie Ivy. On bereavement, we have the Triplet family, the Billups and Hughes family, Brother Charlie Strawbridge, and the Hawks family, and the Peterson family. That concludes our announcements, prayer six, shut in, and bereavement. I have a few names that I forgot to put on the list. Uh, Sister Lucia Henry, Nathaniel Guyton, Lenore Porter, Leon Henry, Esther Bale for Traveling Grace and David and Helen King. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come now thanking you for the opportunity to assemble ourselves in your house of prayer. Thank you, Father, for the remembrance of those who are not able to be here. Father, those who have lost a loved one that are in bereavement. Father, we want to thank you for the offering that has been given. We ask you to bless each one that gave, not in the proportion of what they gave, but how they gave from their heart. We ask, Father, now that you bless this service, we realize, Father, that some here are thinking of sick persons, some are thinking of some who are shut in, and some have their minds on those who are in bereavement. We know, Father, that you are a regulator man, Father, that you can give us joy 
when we are even safe. You can give us joy that exceeds our happiness. We thank you for being God and for allowing us to be your children. Thank you for where you have planted us and why you planted us where we are. We just ask for your mercy and your grace that we can grow into the person that you would have us to be and do those things that you have assigned to our hand. As we worship you in this experience, Lord, we pray that we will be renewed to go out and to be a better witness in your name. Not just verbally, Lord, but in our way of living, our way of giving, and our way of loving. And Father, whatever might be accomplished, we'll give your name all glory on and praise. For it's in the name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen.
Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Know who Jesus is. Somebody needs to know. Somebody needs to know. Somebody needs to know. Know who Jesus is. Everybody needs to know. Everybody needs to know. Everybody needs to know. Know who Jesus is.
Let the church say amen. 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 And amen again. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Good morning, Mount Olive Church family. Good morning, morning, all of those that are viewing. And I would like to wish all the mothers all over the world a very happy and blessed Mother's Day. It is not my desire to be here in front of you too long, but I do have a word from the Lord. On behalf of Pastor Benny W. Henry, the shepherd of this house, to all the preach brethren of the gospel, to the deacons and their wives, to mother of the church, missionary president, to my wife, to all the wives and all of God's children. Bless you. For a brief moment, I'd like uh, for us to look at Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28, and then we're going to skip over to Genesis 2, 21 through 25, and then end at Genesis 3 and 20. Genesis 1, 27 through 28, then Genesis 2, 21 through 25. And then Genesis 3 and 20. And I ask that if you're able to stand, please stand in reverence to the reading of God's holy word. The word of the Lord reads as follows in Genesis 1, 27 through 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Genesis 2, 21 through 25. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. And lastly, Genesis 3 and 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we come to you now with bowed heads and humbled hearts. Thanking you for another day's journey. Thanking you for watching over us last night as we slept in the very image of death. Father, thanking you for touching us this morning, allowing us to rise with our health and our strength, being clothed in our right mind. Father, with the desire to come to your house of worship, to seek you and serve you and worship you in the beauty of holiness. Father, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. Father, we know that we don't deserve it. Father, but we know that because of your son, Jesus, and his sacrifice on Calvary, we are washed in the blood. So, Father, we say thank you right now. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us to all knowledge and truth. Father, we thank you right now for just loving us in spite of ourselves. Father, we ask that you just have mercy on us. Father, we pray and ask right now that your word will come forth with clarity. Father, it will come forth with power and it will come forth with understanding father we pray that it will touch the hearts of whoever hears it and god that they will know you to be god of all father i ask that you hide me behind the cross let the people not see or hear me god but let them see and hear you for if there are any that don't know you for the remission and pardon of their sins they will cry out lord what must i do to be saved father we ask for the forgiveness of sins 
Father, we pray and ask right now that you wash us in the blood of the Lamb and that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness so we can be better doers and not hearers only of your word. It is these blessings and many more we ask in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let every heart say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. You may be seated. I would like to speak to you this morning, church, from the subject of God made mama special. God made mama special. We know that during the month of May, on the second Sunday of the month, we celebrate our mothers and honor them with Mother's Day. This was started in 1914 by an act of Congress. And President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed that this day, the second Sunday in May, will represent a time to honor all of the mothers across the country. We know that mothers are the guardians of future generations. They are instrumental in instilling the principles of faith in their children, guiding their households with unfailing and tireless love, and thus supporting the church. Mothers have many roles in the home, in the community, in the church, and in the world. As we saw with the children earlier that we know that mama is the first doctor that they will ever see. We know that mama is the first dentist that they will ever go to. We know that don't Nobody cooking beat mama's cooking. Even though I don't think my daughter admitted it, but her mama did do her hair. <laughs> Last night for about three hours, getting her hair ready for today. Mama is the hairdresser. Mama is the teacher. Mama is the counselor. Moms is special. Why? Because that's how God made you. That's right. If we take a moment to reflect on the importance of mothers as they are emphasized throughout the Bible in the Old and New Testament, we will understand that God knows every situation, past, present, and future. And it is in the word of God that we will find instructions and directions for not just the mothers, but everyone to train up a child in the way that they should go. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 31, 26 through 29 describes the valuable role that a mother plays in the lives of her family. Amen. The Bible says she opens her mouth in wisdom. Mm -hmm. Kindly instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband, too, praises her. Many are the women of proven worth, but you have excelled, excelled them all. Titus 2, 3 and 5 says that the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. This is what the Bible says about mothers. This is what the Bible says about women. And, and, and I would be remiss if I didn't point this out that we know that there is a spirit that is in the world today that is trying to change how God has defined man and woman. But I'm here to tell you this morning, church, we know that God is the one that sets the rules. And we have to listen to him and not him to us. 
we know that God created them male and female. And when God did this, God gave them a commandment that if you are not a male and if you are not a female, you won't be able to accomplish. God told them after he created them in Genesis, in our text, he told them to be fruitful and multiply. If you don't understand what a man and a woman is, you need to go to the Bible. The Bible teaches us what it means to be called in accordance with the word of God. You see, God gave mom the special ability to create and birth life. That is something that the man cannot do. God did not design the man to be able to carry the child in the womb for nine months in the gestation period and then birth the child forth. God knew exactly what he was doing because when we look at the text in Genesis 2 and we're going we're gonna to get on to the other women in the Bible and, and he calls Adam to go into a deep sleep. A deep sleep. Before there was anesthesia, there was the hand of God. He, he, he calls Adam to go into a deep sleep and he took one of the ribs and then he closed up the flesh before there was even stitches. Wouldn't be no scar. Oh, the great physician. He, he, he was there and he took the rib and he took it from man and he made a woman and brought her into the man. And, and as I was studying this, I was sharing this with my wife and this is something that really just jumped out to me. Before Eve even had a name, she was a woman. Oh, let's look at the text, church. Verse 23 in, in, in Genesis chapter 2, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman. Oh, that's a capital W on that right there now. That means that was her name. That, that was a proper noun, as the teachers in here will tell us. But then after the fall of man in the garden, and, and, and God had to render Judgment and punishment to everyone. He told the woman that her pain would be greatly multiplied during her childbearing and she would be a uh, subject and her desire would be unto her husband. He told Adam from the dust that, that you were taken, you're going to return and you're going to work the field all the days of your life. And after God gave out this judgment, righteous judgment and punishment, Genesis 3.20 says, and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. You see, the woman became Eve. She wasn't Eve from the beginning. She was the woman. But the Bible teaches us in, in chapter 3, verse 20, it said, Adam called his wife's name Eve. First he called a woman, then he called her Eve because she's the mother of all living. Now she's able to fulfill the promise. Because there was a, a, a prophecy about her child and it would bruise the serpent's head and the serpent is healed. And that was a foretelling of the coming of Jesus Christ. Church, what I want you to know that the first mama... Mama Eve was special. And because you are made just like Mama Eve, you are special too. But I, but I want us to know that, 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 that even just like Eve and just like Adam, we're not going to always get it right. That's where God's grace and his mercy come in. We, we, we see throughout the Bible depictions of faithful mothers and faithful fathers and husbands who trusted the Lord. And in turn, they were blessed. And we also see other mothers in the Bible that because of their steadfastness and God's faithfulness, even when their faith faltered, God still blessed them. You see, we, we, we've already looked at Eve, but we're going to take a look at Sister Sarah also. You see, when you look at Genesis 17, 15, and 18, and you can see that Sarah was an elderly woman. She was beyond her childbearing years. 
and in doing so, she, 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 she prayed for a child. And, and the Lord told her that she was going to conceive, but just because it didn't happen in the time she thought it was supposed to happen, she took matters into her own hands. And in doing so, it delayed what even, even a little bit more what God had already promised to her. See, church, what I want you to know is, mothers, what I want you to know that you may go a while without having a child. And you may not even be able to have one because there are many barren women in the Bible. But just know that if you are a mother, a sister, an auntie, a cousin, a grandmama, a big mama, a mama, if you somebody's, ain't if you a woman in somebody's life, you are fulfilling the role of mama. Sarah had to wait for the promised child. Matter of fact, that she, 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 she laughed at God <laughs> when he told her she was going to have a baby. Matter of fact, I want you to know God got a sense of humor because when she named the child Isaac, that means God laughed. <laughs> Amen? Abraham 100. Sarah 90. They got a newborn. Ain't God good? Just hold on, mothers. God is going to be right there with you. And know that he is faithful to keep his promises. Oh, look at Sister Jochebed. Exodus 2, 1 and 10. Pharaoh had demanded that all the sons of the Jews be killed. Jochebed, the mother of Aaron and Miriam and Moses, hid her son Moses for three months. When she was no longer able to hide him, she came up with a plan. I'm here to tell you, church, mama always got a plan. I, 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 I'm telling you, I, I, I've seen my mama take a $20 bill, go into the grocery store, and come out with a basket full of groceries. I'm here to tell you, mama always got a plan. Even if you don't know what the plan is, just know that mama know. God made mama special. Jochebed constructed a basket and set him afloat in the, in the Nile, and she knew the time that Pharaoh's daughter was going to come down to the Nile to, to wash up, and, and she put the baby in the basket and then had her daughter watch over him. And then even in that, when the, when the baby Moses got into Pharaoh's house and, and Miriam was there, she said, I know somebody that can nurse him for you. Here you have Pharaoh's daughter, the stepmama, going to Moses' birth mama. Come on, let's raise this baby together. God made mama special. Mama always got a plan. God made it so that Jochebed was able to nurse Moses and instill in him all of the customs that was of the Hebrew nation. We know that Moses grew up to be a great leader of the Israelites and led them out of captivity from Egypt by performing many miracles, signs, and wonders. Mama was special. Mama was willing to give up her child to another person so that they can live. Mama sacrificed. Mama got a plan because God made Mama special. Hannah over in 1 Samuel 1 and, and 2 through 21, Hannah prayed for a child. Struggled for a Long time because she said the Lord remained silent and the, her, her husband's other wife, Penina, had taunted her and caused her great pain. Made her feel bad. Yeah. Threw the children in her face. Tried to make her feel like she was less than a woman. Hannah went to the temple and prayed and prayed to her and the Lord, and her mouth was moving, but didn't then come out. Oh, this is how the Spirit make intercessions for your church. This is how the Spirit make intercessions for your mama. With groanings that don't nobody else understand. Even the prophet didn't understand what was going on. 
Oh, why are you drunk in the church? Oh, I ain't drunk as you suppose. I'm praying to my Lord. I'm praying to God because I know that if he, if he give me this baby, I'm going to give it back to him. Oh, ain't nothing like a praying mama. A lot of us here because mama prayed. Mama cried. Without. Mama put up with stuff. Oh, mama kept on praying. Oh, as the song say, I can still hear mama praying. The Lord blessed Hannah, not just with Samuel, but with five more children. We know that Samuel became a great prophet for the Lord. We just can't stop with the, the mama and the stepmama because we got to look at the grandmama and the mama also. Oh, what about Sister Lois and Eunice? Second Timothy 1, 3 through 5. The grandmother of Timothy and respectively Lois and Eunice trained him in the word of God. And thanks to their spiritual guidance, Timothy grew strong in the faith and became a prominent leader in the early church. As a matter of fact, Timothy was instructed so well by his mama and grandmama, Paul had to acknowledge them in the Bible. Paul said, I am grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, as I remember you constantly in my prayers, yes. night and day. Yes. I yearn to see you again, recalling your tears so that I may be filled with joy mm -hmm. as I recall your sincere faith that first lived in your grandmama Lois yeah. and in your mother Eunice yeah. and that I am confident lives also in you. Mama, you, you done trained them up. Grandmama, you didn't reinforce what mama said when mama had to go to work. I'm here to tell you that mama and grandmama is important. It don't matter how old or how young you are. I'm here to tell you that as a mother, you have a responsibility to your child no matter how old they get. Grandmama, helping mama. No arguing, no fighting, no backbiting. They're on one accord. Oh, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about Sister Naomi and Sister Ruth. Naomi was the mother-in-law of Ruth. Naomi had two sons, and they both passed away, and she told the, 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 the daughter-in-law, hey, go, go, go back to your people. I'm old. You need to live your life. You're young. Maybe you can find somebody else. Oh, but Sister Ruth. Ruth 1, 16 and 17. Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. And thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God. Where thou diest, will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also if all but death part me and thee. Oh, Ruth told her that just because your son ain't here no more, I'm not going to leave you. Oh, as we say in the word today, I'm going to be with you till the wheels fall off. Because of her mother-in-law's instruction. This is the older woman teaching the younger woman just like in Titus. Oh, Naomi told her how she could get Brother Boaz's attention. Amen. You see, we, we, we thank God for Ruth because Ruth married uh, Boaz, and, and then Boaz had a son, and they named him Obed, who had a son that was named Jesse. And Jesse had a son named David. And out of the house of David came the living word. Oh, God made mama special. God made mama special. Matter of fact, when Ruth had the child, the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord which has not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel, and that he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine old age. 
The Bible says Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became to nurse it. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name saying, there is a son born unto Naomi. Ruth carried the baby. Ruth brought the baby forth. But she said, Naomi, this is your baby. Because we got to remember, Naomi was the, was the mother-in-law. And Naomi was the one that took her back to her people. So she had to find the man that's going to come out of the tribes of Judah. Oh, won't God make it work, church? Oh, I'm about to get out your way, church. Look at, look at Sister Mary. Young woman. Young mother. Teenage pregnancy. The most well-known mother in the Bible. Mary conceived Jesus, the Son of God, through the Holy Spirit. She was visited, visited by the angel Gabriel who informed her of the unique privilege that she had of bearing God's son. She represented and responded in humility, rejoicing in the Lord's greatness, and he blessed her greatly. The Bible says, Luke, in Luke 1, 28, and the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. We all know that Sister Mary was the only woman that was highly favored and blessed among women. I don't care what they tell you nowadays when you ask them how they're doing. Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. No, you're not because that was Mary's child. That was assigned to her by God. We know that Sister Mary was chosen to give birth to Jesus. Like most folks, she had questions. Oh, how am I going to bring forth a child and I hadn't known a man? Oh, don't worry about that. God going to have the Holy Spirit come upon you. And you're going to bear a son and you're going to name him Jesus. You see, it's something about the spirit moving and submitting to God's will, mama, that God will give you a name when you don't even have a name picked out. How do we know Mary was special? Because even in his final moments, and I'm getting ready to get out of your way, church, Jesus was thinking about his mama. Come on, John 19, 25, 27. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother. And his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, Behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that very hour, from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Church, I want you to know that when you trust the Lord, more than you trust yourself, oh, he'll give you new relationships. When you trust God, more than you trust yourself, he'll give you new affections. When you trust God, more than you trust yourself, Oh, God will give you new direction. As Jesus hung on the cross, the Bible records that he has spoken several final statements total. The third saying is recorded in, in the Bible and expresses his care and concern for his mom. Then he looked at the unnamed disciple and Jesus addressed him, and we both know that to be John. Because the Bible tells us in John 21, 24, and this is the disciple which testified of these things. And wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. Oh, how do we know, John, what you're saying is true? Because John was the only one that followed Jesus to the cross. You see, after they had took him captive, all of the rest of them had fled. By that time, Peter had already cussed and denied him. Oh, they had whipped him all night long, put a crown of thorns on his head. Oh, they had condemned him to death, put nails in his hands and feet. Oh, but we know that in that very moment, he looked down and saw his mama weeping. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, we know that God was right there and he was comforting her by giving her another son. You see, we know that John had a good perspective because John was there when he saw Jesus transfigured. John was there when Jesus was in the middle of the garden. And John was there with Jesus on the cross. With these words, woman, behold your son, Jesus invited his mother to look to John 
his much loved disciple and friend yeah. to be her son now. You see, Mary has seen her share of sorrow in her life with her baby Jesus. Now seeing him grown and hated by the people that he came to save. Forsaken by the friends that he led and showed a better way. She stood by the cross. No doubt Simeon's words to her were when Jesus was a baby came back to her mind. Because he told her that this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel. Yes, a sword will pierce you through your own soul also. Or you can find that in Luke 2, 34 and 35. Jesus departing from his mama. But John going to take his place. Oh, John was right there because he was the one that laid on Jesus' breast at the Last Supper. John was the only apostle that was brave enough to stand there with the, the women, and, and he had to be faithful. Despite his excruciating physical agony and pain to be able to draw breath and speak, Jesus was concerned about his mama because mama's special. With his thoughts on Mary's future and security and protection, Jesus entrusted her into the care of John. Oh, woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. You see, church, I got to lay out a little something here for the, so you know most scholars believe that Joseph had already died at this time. That's why he wasn't around. And the law required that the firstborn son to take care of his parents in the absence of the father. You see, Jesus was obeying the law of God even up until the very end. You see, Jesus told him, don't think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. He honored and obeyed the law throughout his life, and he also honored the law while suffering and dying his last breath. Typically, the oldest, the dying son is going to commit his mom into the care of another family member. But by that time, Jesus' brothers hadn't committed to the faith yet. I'm here to tell you that Mary was a virgin when she had Jesus. But after Jesus was born, she had some more children. The Bible tells you that, that, that if it wasn't Jesus, his, his biological, his stepbrothers was James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, who were named Jude in the book, in the Bible. Jesus knew that none of his half-brothers were disciples yet. They weren't ready to take on that role of unconditional love and responsibility. So Jesus chose this closest friend. He chose John. They said, is this not the carpenter's son? Is his mother not called Mary? Jesus looking at Mary. Jesus looking down at his mama. Jesus called his mama woman when she was with him at the wedding feast. Now, don't get it wrong. You can't go around children calling your mama woman today. I'm going to write about the church. That is a good way to find out how hard the flow is and how fast you can get there. But Jesus had to call his mama woman. He had to distinguish between the spiritual and the natural. You see, he called her woman because naturally she gave birth to him. But spiritually, he took her from the rib of Adam. He had to call a woman because naturally uh, the woman transgressed in the garden. But spiritually, the Bible says that the woman is going to be saved through her childbearing. He called her woman because naturally his mother was younger than he was. But spiritually, he was there in the beginning when God said, let us create man after our own image and likeness. Oh, Jesus had to make it spiritual on the cross when he called a woman because he knew that he was going on to be with the father. Jesus saw mama standing there. Son, behold thy mother. Establishing new relationships. So whether you are a biological, adoptive, step, grandmama, it doesn't matter. God has given you a specific role in the household. God has given you a specific role in the world, and God made you special. I'm here to tell you, mama, that God hadn't forgot about you. God has not left you by yourself. And he has heard every single cry. God will establish new relationships. God will fix some old relationships. God will work it out. 
Jesus' words on the cross were for care and compassion of his mother when he told her to behold your son. One tree in the garden got us all in trouble. But one tree on a hill called Calvary gave us a way back to the Father. They put nails in his feet. Nails in his hand. Hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour. The face of the earth got dark. Began to quake. He gave up the ghost and said it is finished. He was thinking about mama. The centurion guard wanted to make sure he was dead. So as they did most of the times when someone was crucified, they broke their legs to make sure that the weight of their body would truly go ahead and suffocate and kill him. But they said, he's already dead. You don't have to break his legs. They pierced him in the side. Blood and water came forth. Took him down off the cross. Laid him in a bar tomb. Stayed there Friday. All day Saturday. But early that Sunday morning, church. Early that Sunday morning, church. Early that Sunday morning, church. He got up out the grave and he had all power, heaven and earth in his hand. Stayed around 40 days. Nice to be seen by men. Stepped on a cloud and went on back to glory. Where he sat down at the interceding for you and I today. God has been thinking about mama since the beginning. God is thinking about mama right now. Mothers, I want to encourage you this Mother's Day to know how special you are, to know how wonderful you are, to know how beautiful you are, to know how loving you are, to know how kind you are, because God put this inside of you because he made you special. Not just on Mama's Day, but every day. Two things is going to happen when Jesus rearranges a relationship in your life. You're either going to have to make some moves or you're going to have to make some room. But either way, God will give you what you need to make. The doors of the church is open. Happy Mother's Day. Mama, you are special in every way.
God for our children this morning. Thank, thank God for Reverend Poopy this morning. <laughs> he, he brought a good message this morning. I mean, uh, if you don't know nothing about a woman and a mother now, you won't never know nothing. <laughs> hey, he, he let all you women know you are special. If you're a woman, you are special. Whether you're a mama or not, you are special because you are made in the image of God. Amen. 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 Uh, I, I am so proud of this choir. We had... We, we, we had our Sunday school Congress meeting Thursday night, and they said, well, Reverend, you know, you have to bring your choir back because you're over our music department, and you need to get to get the choir here for the banquet. I said, I'm bringing the youth choir this year. I ain't bringing no old folk. <laughs> so I want you all to get ready because we're going on the 24th of May, and we're going to raise the roof. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want y'all to get ready. We're going to have to do three selections, so we're going to be ready, okay? I, I am so happy and excited. I don't know what to do. I just got excited volunteering them. Amen. Amen. I always do. I always do. I always do. Hey, hey if you can't toot your own horn, who can toot it? <laughs> we have to see our visitor, brother. Brother Gibson, good to see you back there. Any other visitors that are with us this morning? Happy to have you too. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, uh, we, when we dismiss now, we're going to turn it over to our youth leader, and we will have a Mother's Day program off of line. I, yes, sir. I did make a mistake. I said May. It's June. <laughs> he was just giving me uh, straight on that. I didn't realize I said the 24th of May, but it's 24th of June. We'll be, we're going to be ready. Amen. And uh, after I try this selection, this is especially for mothers, then we're going to sign off and we're going to be in the hands of our youth director. And we had a benediction after the program. Okay. As a child in my mother's care, my mother told me, she said, Jesus will always be there. Now I'm old, I'm an old grown man, for a while I've been living, living, living on my own but I can truly say that Jesus he ain't never left me alone I just want 
gonna tell you no I'm depending on you oh no I'm depending on you can I say that one more time growing up as a child in my mother's care my mother told me told me Jesus would always be there now I'm a grown 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 old man I've been living on my own I can't say Jesus he ain't never never left me alone I want you to know no I'm depending help me say that church oh But I want you to know Yeah Had some sleepless night But I'm still depending on Had some friends to walk away and leave me But Jesus ain't never left me alone But Jesus been right there. Lord. My money got strained. Bills were due. But I'm glad Jesus was right there to see me through. I tell you, you can depend on him. Yeah. Do it. Let's run it right here. Come on, Father. I'm depending on you. Depending on. I'm depending on you. When nobody else will ever do. Jesus, I'm depending on you. All by myself, but I'm depending on you. Raise up my bow down here. Wipe the tears from my weeping eyes. Brought me joy when I was sad. Oh, Lord. Lord, I'm depending on you. Oh. depend on you wherever I go Lord, I'm depending on you I'm depending on you
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's a good place right there to be. Let the church say amen. 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 And amen again. We thank God again for all the mothers. The mothers that have gone on that are still living inside of us. Those mothers that have yet conceived. And those future mothers that will continue to lead on. Children, whatever it is that you have that is special just between you and your mom, you do it every day, and you laugh, and you smile, and you enjoy it, because mama ain't going to always be here. But she is with you. wherever you go and you're laughing and your smile that is your mama shining through thank you Lord remember going fishing with my mom going to the bingo with my mama and my grandmama. My grandmother Bernice making seven layer homemade chocolate cakes. Grandma Stella making homemade apple pies and peach cobblers. Tea cakes. That's what y'all folks folk don't know about tea cakes. Butter roll. Homemade biscuits with your flour and your water. Homemade jelly and jam and preserves. Going out in the field and pulling corn and picking tomatoes and 
I had so many purple thumbs from shelling peas, but when there wasn't no grocery store, we had to grow it ourselves. Walking to Aunt Lucille's house. When one person ate, everybody ate. But mama didn't eat until everybody was full. That's mama. We're going to go ahead and get ready to turn the program over to our youth director. And one announcement before she comes. Mothers, we have just a little snack prepared for you after service. So we're going to ask that all the mothers eat first and then the children. I know mama going to make sure that the children eat first and then they eat. Because that's what mamas do, amen? Amen. We, we just wanted to honor you and tell you that we love you and that we appreciate you as a church family. So before she comes to do the program and we go offline, I'm going to go ahead and give the benediction, and then we're going to bless the food. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for the things that our eyes have seen and that our ears have heard. God, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit that has indwelled in us and in this place that has filled us up so we can run on a little while longer, so that we can lift up the blood-stained banner of Jesus in a lost and dying world. Father, we pray and ask now that you forgive us of our sins. Father, that you strengthen us and allow us to walk upright before men and before you. God, we just ask right now that you have your way, that you bless all of the mothers all over the world, that you just strengthen and continue to just give them everything that they need so that they can train up their children. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you. Ask him that you bless every church door that was open in your name today, that you strengthen all of those that are standing on your promises. God, that you be with us and give us traveling grace and mercy until we come back again. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you.